this is Steve Barton. In today's video, uh, we're going to show how to make a nice boring bar that you can use indexable uh, inserts. We're making these boring bars using a fixture that I made probably between 30 and 40 years ago. I used to make a lot of these bars with this fixture. Uh, I bet it's, it's made well over 200 bars. Uh, a lot of people that bought these bars, they, they liked them better than the ones that they could buy at the store with the design that I have in them, uh, the angles I have set up, plus I had a good price on them. The fixture uh, is made so that you can cut all of your angles in your pocket as well as here uh, by moving a pin out. It pivots on a pin here and then you can pivot in uh, the different locations to get the different angles and we'll go over this uh, a little bit more when we actually demonstrate cutting uh, the bar. Uh, one of the other things that I have done in the bars that people liked in the past, uh, a lot of the uh, guys that would buy these bars uh, from time to time you would have your little oops moment and as they're coming into a shoulder on the part when they're boring uh, they go too deep and then they would just crack uh, the whole pocket and everything out. Uh, right now this bar is soft. I usually heat treat them uh, to 5052 Rockwell. This is uh, A2 and I do that just so that it keeps the pockets from getting all marred up if they get some grit and stuff in there. Uh, but what I, I started doing because some of the guys were breaking their uh, boring bars and uh, I started making them uh, instead of a single I would have a pocket on that end and then I'd put a pocket on this end and then I would uh, uh, give them a bar that would have uh, two pockets if they destroy one end and flip it around and they still got another one and it comes in handy if they got a job set up and uh, they destroy the bar and now they don't have a tool they can use this bar was just working perfect well now it saves them because now they can just flip it around and they can uh, use the other end of the bar so what I did earlier off camera is I made this one and I, I got the pockets and I got all the dimensions that I needed and got them wrote down uh, so that I can set up and uh, I just wind to uh, with my digital the dimensions I need in order to get this set right. And uh, what we'll do on camera is we will put this pocket on the other side and show you what this double headed boring bar will be like. <coughs> the particular insert and the screw that I'm using on here, uh, this uh, uh, is the same insert and screw that they have uh, in the vending machines at my full-time job. Uh, there's a number of guys that are interested in uh, these bars with these inserts. That way they can just go to the vending machine and, and, and get them out rather than paying out of their own pocket. And so uh, this particular bar is designed uh, around uh, those two elements. Now it's interesting because when I was looking at these screws, this screw was a, a, a design that was similar to this right here. It's a, one of your insert screws, uses a toric wrench. And uh, uh, most of them that I could find when I was looking for them in the catalog, uh, those were metric. Uh, this one particular one is a 440 and that's kind of nice because I don't have any metric taps, but I do have 440 taps, so that works really good. Uh, when you make these bars, that's the thing that you're going to have to keep in mind. What you want to do is pick out what insert that you want, design the bar around it, and all your dimensions. Because all of these uh, inserts, they'll measure different. Uh, here's some of the inserts that I personally have that uh, came from a circle bar. When you bought the bar and got 10 inserts, uh, you would have uh, that uh, style insert. And this uses kind of a modified flathead screw, something similar like this in a 440, but it's modified. Uh, we take these type of inserts right here, and you can see there's no shape in the, in the head like you get here. It uh, uh, works real nice with a 440. There's no shape. Uh, on these type of inserts, that's what I used to use in the past because they were cheap and they're readily available and they actually cut pretty nice. I could use just a regular uh, socket head cap screw, a 540, and put those in there. So that's the other thing you got to watch for, is the whole size of the inserts can determine the screw. And uh, uh, so the insert as well, what you have to watch for 
is most of the inserts they'll have an 11 degree angle relief on there but if you get some of them like uh, I believe this is a Sandvik insert uh, that's only a 7 degree relief and so you have to be careful because I, I do use a tapered end mill when I cut my tapered end mill is an 11 degree well you obviously can't use uh, uh, that and make it a uh, pocket for your 7 degree inserts when I make these bars <coughs> I'll make them so that I got a five degree relief I'll exaggerate here five degree relief that way so that the tip is higher than over here that way if you're going into a hole and you're coming up to a shoulder there's a five degree relief uh, so you can come in and you can actually face off and get a real nice finish uh, it works really nice now this particular boring bar is solid carbide uh, we purchased this uh, we did not buy it but it, it's uh, 90 degrees to uh, the bar itself so there's no uh, relief in there if this bar set up straight and you're trying to go into a shoulder and you you got a nice shoulder pretty soon this entire edge of this uh, carbide is going to be rubbing on the shoulder and it's it's not going to be nice it's going to leave an ugly shoulder it's going to get loud you'll probably uh, have a potential if you hit the shoulder hard or break in the bar easier uh, so uh, a boring bar with that five degree relief, relief actually works good for shoulder work this will work really good for going all the way through a part but this will do both the shoulders and through the part now this particular insert does have an 11 degree angle over here this way so in my fixture it's a two-piece fixture and I have a design with this part that will actually hold the bar while I'm machining it it will actually hold it but uh, you can see it's thinner here thicker there this this is set up at five degrees so that when I cut this pocket in there and then if you hold your, your bar straight what we have we have a five degree angle coming this way and what that does if you have 11 degrees on your insert uh, I tilt it so that the inserts at five degrees that leaves me six degrees of relief on there but what it does it helps the chip in the direction uh, pulling it back but it also gives a lot more strength on the tip uh, if, if, if you got an exaggerated uh, angle like so there's not a whole lot of carbide under the cutting tip and carbide is very fragile and uh, you'll find that you'll be breaking your tips more by tilting this up five degrees uh, we add more carbide under the cutting point and it will actually give you a lot better life uh, on your inserts so but here's uh, some of the different inserts this one right here again was a seven degree uh, relief it's a sandvik uh, this right here comes with the circle bars that I bought years ago uh, it's a carbide tin coated and again it's using like a modified flat uh, head screw uh, I bought a 3 8 bar and I bought a half inch bar and they're using the exact same uh, call out on your insert but if you measure these inserts and you measure the thickness of the inserts they're about five thousandths different even though they got the same uh, call out but the one thing in the chip breaker is a little bit different which is on the end and so what you have even though that the insert is thicker you can see on the chip breaker if Adam can zoom up on it there's a little lip uh, there's a little lip on that one too uh, you got lips on, on these other and, and so when you design the boring bar you want to go not from the total thickness of the insert but you want to try to hit the center line on that tip so even though these two inserts have the same call out uh, and they are different in thicknesses the cutting edges is a hundred thousandths up from the bottom so and that's what's important if you got a little bit more sticking up uh, from here no big deal now this particular insert is ninety five thousandths so when you're designing the boring bar and you want to get that cutting tip on the center at that point uh, and if that's at 95 thousandths well then that's the number that you got to factor in when you're machining it in uh, and you're probably not going to get it just perfect but you want to get it as close as you can now if you have CNC 
Uh, you can make these things quite fast and you don't need the whole fixture. You can just take something if you want the, uh, and we've done this uh, in my full time job where we just held this in the vise so it's at the five degree and we'd machine the pocket, drill and tap it and we were running them pockets out in about five minutes a piece that's really fast. Now on this fixture uh, when we used to make them about 10 at a time I think we were down to about 20 minutes a pocket getting them real nice because there's a number of tool changes that have to be taken in between there uh, but it still sped things up plus it took care of all the angles so what we'll do now well before we do that uh, I brought a another common boring bar insert this is an 80 degree diamond now this fixture is not set up to do that but you can actually make your fixtures uh, by putting your pivot point and your dial pins and, and calculating that all. You can do just about any shape uh, insert that you want. And if uh, the 80 degree diamond is what you want, you can actually make a fixture that will pivot to the right pocket angles for that. And you can go from there. So what we'll do now, we'll just move over to the mill and I'll get this all set up. And uh, what I'll do, uh, this is my pivot point. I'm going to uh, locate the center of that. I'll get that all done. Uh, uh, one other thing I want to show on this fixture is there's three different holes here, three different holes here. And, and what this is, uh, the, the hole closest to the center is for using a 3 8 bar. The hole we're going to use right now is this one, and that's for doing a half inch boring bar, and the one's farthest out is for doing a 5 8 bar. And what that does, it allows me to indicate on this pin have that as my pivot point and then I can have everything pivoting where the screw is going to be at and uh, so those are all calculated uh, so that what it will do is give me about forty thousandths from here to here and what that does is give me the, the you know the tip sticking out I shoot for forty thousand so this is a half inch bar we have roughly forty thousand sticking out I should be able to get in uh, under a 600 thousandths diameter hole without uh, too much trouble. So uh, the thing that uh, you would have to be careful about, uh, these bars aren't designed for doing some serious hogging. Uh, they're just medium to light cuts, but they work great. So we'll uh, come back in a bit uh, after we get this set up in the mill and I get this all indicated in and we'll actually show uh, the build of the boring bar.